Hi, welcome back. The following video tutorial is a video that I extracted from our premium courses. Our premium courses is undergoing a huge promo. Instead of 120 US dollar per year, you can subscribe now for the whole year of just 25 US dollar. This promo ends on the 30th of April. This tutorial is among one of the many tutorials that we upload weekly to our premium course subscribers. Enjoy yourself. Action. So you've done white, you've done black, all with one light. Well done, you have two pictures for sale now. But what would really interest buyers on stock agencies is that you have your photo transparent background like this. When you see this checkered box, that means it's PNG format, which means that the background is transparent and you can easily replace the background with anything that you want. So if a hotel or restaurant were to buy this shot with a transparent background, what they can do is they can take a background photo of their restaurant or their hotel and replace it at the back and it will look like they have this photo custom shot. So we're going to teach you how you do this. But firstly, you need to find yourself a green cardboard. Anything green or anything that is not the same color as the fork and the tomato. Put this on a light stand, clip it with your butterfly clamp or stick it to the wall. And here's the thing. This is about, this is one meter. This is about 0 0.8 meters away from the green background. The reason why I put it nearer is because that the way that we're going to put the flash later on. And apart from that, when you're to front, you're going to see the edge of the cardboard. So one of the things you can do is perhaps not use a full frame and have the camera closer and APS-C is what I'm going to do on a 50 millimeter. Now you notice that again, I tilt this articulated arm to the right a little bit. Let's go through the flash settings now. You must be thinking, to use two flashes because we need to light up the green cardboard and the second one to light up the fork and tomato. Be economical. If you can use one flash, always use one flash. It's just like mathematics. If you have to solve an equation, always use the shortest way. It's called elegant lighting. Let's go through the flash, a TT685S. Now, whenever I have to fire light on the background, remember the formula that I taught you? Half power. But the zoom now is 200. It's too focused. That's not a good thing. So I would use a zoom of about 24 or 28, half power. And remember, flip on your S1 mode. And here is the trick. With one flash, how do you light up two things? Turn the flash head at an angle, something like this. And then you notice that the flash has two flaps. One is a white diffusion panel. The other one is a white angle panel. See, when I pull this out, the zoom becomes 14 millimeter. When I push this in, it becomes 28. So 14 millimeter is just crazy too white. You're gonna lose a lot of power. Don't do this. It's gonna spray light everywhere. Push this in. But when you pull it out, leave the white one out, push that white angle panel in. The purpose of this is so that we can have this panel spraying light to the bottom of the flag, while at the same time still get the top of the flag. Right? Ideally, this panel will also block the light from hitting this. This is going to be light up separately. Now that's it. Let's go through a previous shot and also my camera settings now. So I will slowly remove this tomato first. Let's get a beautiful green background first. I'm gonna use an APS-C, it's a very old Nikon here. F11, like what I usually do, at a shutter speed of 1 over 100, which will adjust accordingly later on. My ISO is 200, pop up this flash, make sure it's on manual mode. You can do so by going in here Go to your pencil icon, go to bracketing and flash, go in here, go to manual power. We need this on manual power because the flash 
was set on S1, which requires one trigger of flash. You should watch this tutorial about S1, S2 flashes. Go in there, make sure that manual power is at its lowest power. This is full power, 1 over 1, right? And go all the way down to 1 over 1, 2, 8. Hit OK. So F11 ISO 200 shutter speed 100, but I need to take a pre-visualization shot to make sure that my green looks great. Here is what I can teach you. Just slowly flip this away. And then come here. It's going to be a horizontal shot. Pre-focus on the edge of the mounting board, of the green cut. Because if it is a green board, it can't focus. This is focus hunting. So I'm going to go there, focus, and boom. Take a shot. This is what you get. That flash goes off. Let's see how even this is. Look at the histogram. It's a mid-tone. That's beautiful. Now, I forgot to tell you one thing. Whenever I shoot something colorful like this, I'm shooting, in my case, I'm shooting JPEG. You can use RAW if you want to, but always have a JPEG. So I'm using a JPEG fine, small. And what I do, because JPEG is a compressed format, so I go in here and set my picture control that adjusts the color. So I go on Vivid, and then I increase the contrast, I increase the saturation. Because I know that when it comes to colorful things, I love them more saturated when it comes to food shoot. And also I increase the contrast, that way I get more contrast, so I don't need to edit this so much. So with that done now, I'm going to slowly bring in the fork and the tomato. Now remember what I told you, it must be slightly in front of this flesh. This flesh is here, this is here, this is how much is in front. If it is directly on top of the flesh, you are in trouble. I'll show you what happens. So once I got this, so I noticed that the tomato is starting to drip some water, so I'm getting my tissue paper and soak this off. So always have this handy when you're shooting food. This is great. So I already polished the fork, but I can still see water stain. I'm going to leave this here so you can learn how to post-process this. So typically, you would do this with a white flag, bounce the flesh from the bottom. So the flesh at the bottom here actually hits the green cardboard at the same time bounce off this. This is too big. So what I'm going to do, a smaller mounting board. Now here's the thing, I want you to come directly behind me and focus your attention on this fork. I'm going to flip this to back. Right, so if I do this, you notice that the fork sees the reflection of the mounting board. Can you see this? And this is where I'm going to put my mounting card. So I'm going to flip this around, that way I'm going to have the flash at the bottom hitting the green board and at the same time still hit my flag. So this is way easier to handle than the bigger flash. So once you get a good coverage, focus, take that shot. Wow. Take a look at this picture. Perfectly exposed green background. If you want it nice, the green should be darker, about one stop below mid-tone. That way it's easier to extract, but doesn't matter as long as it's even. And zoom in and look at the specular highlight. That's right, these are called specular highlight. It shouldn't bloom. You notice the beautiful tone and gradient that you have on the tomato, all we need to do is learn to touch up the imperfection of the fork. This is a cheap fork. It's not a Christoffel. So you notice that you get a little bit of highlight at the bottom. I'll leave this here so you learn how to edit this. And I did tell you that I will show you what happens when you don't do two things. 
If you were to have this flash directly below this fork and you don't pull this out, even though you may be like so, let me show you what happens. This is going to create a flary specular highlight. When you see that, that's a bad shot. Move your cut around until you get a clean specular highlight. Focus on the tomato. Zoom into this part of the photo now and take a look at all this bloomy sparkle. When you see this in your photo, that's not a good thing. It's a telltale sign of bad light setup. You shouldn't have specular highlight blooming or sparkling like this. So the trick is to push this to the back. Again, pull out. There are two flaps, stick in the white angle, the clear one in and the white one out. If you want it nicer, put a black card here even. So I'm going to take this shot one more time. You know what? I'm going to use a close-up filter to show you what happens. That way I can go closer. This is called a close-up filter. It's actually a magnifying glass. You can actually head on to your online shopping mall and grab yourself a few of this. It comes with two times. What it does, it magnifies two times, three times and four times. Just to prove a point, I'm using a close-up filter four times. Now, you might see degradation, anything that is after three times. So the best close-up filter you can get would be two times or three times. If you have a macro lens, you should try this shot with a macro lens. So just screw this in, into your lens, and every lens has this diameter of the lens. This is a 52 mm four times close-up filter. The brand I'm using here is iLens. It doesn't matter. This will allow you to shoot closer. So let me show you what happens. You can now shoot this close and still focus. Effortless. Take a look at how clean this is. But always make sure that you zoom in and look at the edge of the pictures. See if there's any degradation or chromatic aberration. Some close-up filter, the quality can be bad. So you can try these two brands that I use. One is called Kokin, it's from France. The other one is iLens. It's made in China or perhaps Korea, I cannot remember. But look at the edges, it's quite sharp. So try with a close-up filter. So you can try this at home now and that could be your assignment to set up a fork or spoon and put maybe a strawberry in front and see how that works out. Oh hey, if you're using a close-up filter, there's only a fixed distance that you can focus. If you're too far, you can't focus. If you're too near, you can't focus. So you need to rock your body a little bit. That's it. And, and only then you can take a shot. So if the shot is too bright, in my case, I can drop my ISO. So apparently this is a bit too close now. Drop my ISO, make it a little bit darker. So it's just one third of a stop. And then I can do this. Take multiple angles. Don't just take one shot and be done with it. Look at this. So if you compare this picture here and you compare this one here, you can see there is an outline at the bottom. Outline is fine. Zoom in and make sure that you have no blooming specular highlights. So you notice that it's a little bit bloomy. So my editor, Yi Chong, is going to show you how he reads all these bloomy specular highlights and tame them. So having an outline is pretty cool. It's a telltale sign where the photographer put the flash. So a good photo shouldn't show where I put the flash. So if you look at the shot earlier, you can see that I can tell there's a flash at the bottom. And if you look at this photo, you notice there is no telltale sign where the flash is located. And these are some sample edited photos of what you can do to the picture after you remove the green. It's so realistic and impressive, isn't it? So if you like what you learned in this tutorial, head on to this website and subscribe to our premium courses because the offer of just 25 US dollars per year ends on 30th of April because we want you to stay home, stay safe, and keep learning.